we have a super dope guest that's stepping in today for AD. Man, he's a he's a great guy. I mean, I've known him for like two, three years now, and I mean, he's been brought nothing but laughter and smiles into my life since I met this guy, man. Um, everybody in here might know him uh, from the chat. No chill, DZ in the motherfucking building. Where you at, bro? Yeah, no chill, yeah. no chill in the building. What's good, bro? What's happening? What's going on, family? Hey, man, ain't shit to it. Just kicking it. You already know, man. I appreciate you for, for pulling up. Oh, you already know. You, boy. I appreciate you hitting me up. I mean, you know, like a typical black person, it was it was last minute that you hit me up. But you know, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna leave you high and dry, my dog. I'm here. You know what I mean? I, hey, dog. Come I, I was. Come on now. I, I was I was outside walking my pet sloth, and I said, you know what? I drop everything. Craig's in trouble. Come quick. So I came through. Hey, I, hey, and I appreciate you, bro. You know, you know the chat love you, man. Hey, DZ in the chat, man. Let's get a hashtag DZ in the motherfucking chat. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> One time. Hey, yeah, man. Hey, what, what kind of kicks is them back there? This thing's fire. Them uh, fire red fours, uh, Jordans. Oh. Yeah, you know I mean, I got I got I ain't worn them yet. They dead stock, but I oh, wanted man. to have something in the background because you know you got you got everything. Where yo, where Pennywise though? You had Pennywise on your desk and you moved them. You know, I got Pennywise tatted. Oh, where? I got Pennywise like literally. I can't show it right now, but it's on my leg. You know, I got a, I got a, uh, I got a horror themed half leg sleeve. Bro, I won't. I just one. now, now I can't get one because you got one. You could get one. It ain't gonna be just, just pick different people. Just don't bite. Just don't get Chucky. Don't get Michael Myers. Oh. Don't get Jason. <laughs> like <laughs> basically, don't get all the. Don't get the best niggas. <laughs> <laughs> so, so leave the good people out. You, you, you want me walking around with Candyman on my leg? Yeah, and Jeepers Creepers. You, you can get him. You can get him, and 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 one of the and one of the dolls off of Tales from the Hood. You can get one of them. <laughs> you might as well get the damn Children of the Corn in that bitch too. You want to talk yep. about scary, and, and, <laughs> and, and Pinhead from uh, from Hellraiser? All That'll right, work. I, I'm, I'm done with you. I'm I'm, I'm done. I'm done with you. This man right here is part of the reason why because of just like his outstanding and humbleness that he had hey sip man get on the show bro pull up man turn the camera on man what's good yo hey, what's good man sip bro man i don't know if i ever told you this but like you you, you really like changed like my mindset that i had like that day when we met bro it was it was so crazy and like when we when our when our next when our other guests get on the show today, like we gonna we gonna we gonna really rap about it because I mean just like that experience when I met you that day at a Hyde pool party, like we was at Hyde and you know Hyde be be jumping. I go up. <laughs> Hyde be going up. And this was hey, like, it never fell. And this was like my so y'all so y'all basically telling me I'm missing out. Yeah, you definitely missing out. You, you, you come to Miami, you got to go to a Hyde pool party. Sip, this is right after you got your contract with Tennessee. And you literally like one of the best safeties in the league, period. Like, and I watched so much tape tape of you from when you were in Jacksonville from the coach that we both had, like, well, we, the mutual coach that we had. Like, so I'm just like, man, I got it. I'm trying to make plays like this dude. So when I seen you and we tra and we've been training at the same spot for the shit, since I got out of the league or well, since I got into the league and I had just yeah. never met you. So like when I when I was introduced to you at this pool party, you was like you weren't you weren't ducked off in a section like like I expected. You was just like out there vibing with everybody, and it was it was just so like inspiring, bro. It was crazy because I had the same perception, and it and it just kind of fucked me up because you were like I'm one of y'all, like I'm one of these people. We out here vibing. Yeah. That's crazy you say that. I, I feel you. And um, like we, you know what? At the end of the day, we live in a world where, you know, it's like perception is reality. You feel me? So I know exactly what you mean when you say that. But, you know, for me, for myself and like anybody I meet, like, you know, I'm, I tell them straight up, look, the person you meeting now is the same person you're going to know, you know, five, ten years, same person you're going to know when I'm around the billionaires or if I'm around you know, some friends and I just kind of, I try to hold on to that, you know what I mean? But as far as that time and how, you know, it's a great time, 
is um it, it's just fun. You feel me? And and like it's coming into the league early. I think it's something you got to learn as you go. Just a quick background. I remember Josh Evans. He was the safety that played next to me in Jacksonville for uh, the four years or four four to three years. Um, he was there with me, but. Like, I remember we used to go out to parties and we tried the whole thing, getting the whole section and doing what you grew up seeing other guys who made it to the NFL do, like Lewis Delman, so the guys from UN, Intro Row, like, all right, I see them on the, you know, you see, you just see celebrities, you see people of status, you know, doing these things, going to, going to clubs or just having fun. You feeling like that's what it's supposed to be until I went there, I tried to do it and I left thinking, like, damn. I'm out five G's and I'm not. <laughs> You're not fulfilled. I don't. <laughs> that, that's that's what I be thinking about. That's what I be thinking about. <laughs> like, yeah. This ain't it. <laughs> and yeah, and I used to tell man. And what I started doing, I started traveling. You know what I mean? I take that five grand and guess what? Me, whether I take my family to the Bahamas or you know, me and my girl go um, on a trip or just you know, going places and then. You end up going places and start learning things, and it's yeah. like stuff that you never forget. You know what I mean? And shoot, it might sound like cliche to some people or whatever, but for me personally, I felt like you know what? Um, I felt like my my money's better worth spent, you know, doing that yeah. instead of you know trying to entertain other people. Because shoot, right. you know, like you said, exactly. I signed what a twenty five million dollar contract, I had a signing bonus. You know, I saw like twelve mil of it. You know what I mean? But Shoot, that doesn't mean, you no know, to me, like, all right, I'm going to go spend all this money and for what? Like, you know, for, I guess, you know, other people to have a good time. That's yeah. cool, but. Like, I feel like we, we so, like, tied or so, like, set on, um, what's the word? So set on, like, entertaining or pleasing other people, like, in those type of situations. Like, because, I mean, like, who want to go out and spend $10,000 on on a night where they probably finna have like four or five drinks. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I, I never understood it. And I mean, I went, I like me, 18 that year. I mean, I probably, I did it way too hard. And I mean, that was like one of the, like, I, I look at that time as like one of the biggest learning periods for me. But that's cool. You know what? Cause let me tell you something. Ain't no better teacher than time. You know what I mean? Somebody can tell you, everything under the sun but sometimes man like i literally gotta let it happen to me and hopefully you know there's some people who could just like all right i'll learn from this person but you know what i i believe i truly believe if not everything at least some things you know some people are gonna touch the stove to see if it's hot you know yeah. what i mean but guess what you, at least you know and you real heavy in like giving back and and teaching the young kids and, and bringing up the young kids and being a good example to those to the youth like tell us about sip squad yeah man let me tell you man 2015 um i decided to start a uh uh a non-profit organization it's called sip squad at risk youth foundation um sip squad came from as part of my name like last name is cyprian and um so like when i got to jacksonville that's where i got drafted to you know, all the fans were going on Twitter and they were like, yo, you need a like, you need a name or whatever. Like, you know, and I was like, all right, well, throw some at me and see what happens. Let's let's see which one we could pick. So I heard everything from Sippinator <laughs> to like <laughs> Sipazord, like all kind of stuff. But one person put Sip Squad and I was like, you know what? That just right. That like, you know, that flows like it sounds good coming out your mouth. Right. So that was just a that was just something like. You know, the fans in Jacksonville just knew and referred me to referred to me as from there. You know, it was like no question to use that when I was talking when I wanted to create a foundation. So I, I made it um, at risk youth foundation because to me, you know, growing up, I think like, you know, I was one of those at risk youth. And uh, when you say, what is that? What do you mean at risk? It's like I feel like, you know, you're a kid that can go one of two ways. It's you could either like, you know, go to the streets and get in trouble and do things that um that are probably not beneficial to your future. Or, you know, you can find opportunities. You can find people who actually believe in you and believe in what you're doing and try to strive for something else. And while striving for that, like, for example, football, striving to be a player, you know, 
you stay in school or you get good grades or you don't go to those fights after school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's like a at risk. There's kids out there that that, you know, can go either way. And, um, you know, I felt like, man, well, shoot, let me try to do something that can pull people in the right direction as much as I can. And uh, that's what I did. That's what I did. The vision for it is to definitely throw events where I raise money and um, being able to, you know, because everything costs money at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So I want to raise money so I can actually do things to impact these kids, whether it, whether it comes, whether it's a, a community center, whether it's um, paying for tutors for these kids, whether it's, um, you know, uh, Christmas presents, just to know that you got something. And I never really experienced like the whole like being supported by, by someone of, of status or whatever as, as a youth. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like that, that type of, that type of interaction, that type of stuff, like motivates, like, and it, and it, it inspires you and drives you and drives you, especially as a kid. Yeah. You guys can see me. Yeah. Yeah. We see. You. Yeah. We can see you. And I also, oh, I okay. also feel like it's, it's, it's also underrated. Like, that stuff doesn't go unnoticed by the the inner city kids. Like you see the smiles on their faces when you guys, that's why I appreciate like when you guys, you know, have these different foundations or you guys put on certain camps, like those camps could literally save a child from joining a gang. Instead of joining a gang, they're joining a football team. So you guys as players, you guys is doing it because of course you guys want to help, but I think you guys don't realize how big of an impact that you guys are actually having on the, these kids, whether they get an autograph, you know, t-shirt or not. Like it's, it's really dope that you guys are able to do that. And I just want to commend both of you guys because both of you guys have done your part, you know, from the, the smallest things to, to camps, to giveaways, just, just to make kids feel like, you know, they have a shot of, you know, making it out of, you know, whatever respective hood that they've grown up in or any circumstances that they're dealing with under their roofs of their their household so it's super super dope hey as a kid man i had one and he wasn't even in the nfl at the time but he was at the u he was a linebacker john beeson he was the only football player i remember he actually came out and spoke to me and my little league team i was in little league at the time came out to our little league team man and um or Pop Warner team, you know, the little thing is for baseball. Yeah. But um, Pop Warner team, he came there. It was him, his mom, and you know, he just spoke to us for a little bit. And um, shoot, I remember like, damn man, I'm 30 now. You know, who knows? I was like, what, 12 or whatever. And it's something that I'll never forget. You know, so I kind of put that into perspective too. When like, when we talking to these kids, and um, hoping that they get those experiences, even though things are different now. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't know about you said you met. Dallas got, yo, I've never met an NFL player. <laughs> I didn't go to no games as a kid. Yeah. The video games was the closest I knew to interact with a, <laughs> you feel me? Bro, they had the, so they it's had like, the yo. <laughs> they had to camp in my hometown. So like, I mean, it was, it, and it was free, like training uh, camp. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It's dope. <laughs> it's like, you know, now, but think about it. You could go on Instagram and, or Twitter. And write your favorite play. Everybody, everybody's so accessible. We didn't have that back in the day. I never forget one time. My, uh, my yeah, my brother one time. My brother's like five years older than me, and he went to James Worthy camp for the Lakers, and he still got the picture to this day. They both had on a little matching shirt. He took a picture with James Worthy. I'm like, I never, I never got that experience though. I was just always, you know, running, running the streets or in the house. So. Yeah. He got lucky with that one, but yeah, everybody's so accessible now. You could literally, and you might get lucky and get a reply, depending on you know what time of day that you hit them up. <laughs> sure. Like, because I respond to literally every DM if I can. Like, I, I get to them. I might get to them a year later, but I usually get back. But bro, just think of how it is. Like, we, me and Rich, we'll, we'll be playing. We'll be playing two K, and his biggest fan will hop in a Twitch channel. And be like, hey, Rich, can you shout me out for my birthday? Imagine getting a shout out from your favorite football player just in that instant, that easily. It's it's crazy, bro. Like the the services these days, like they make that happen. Like they make so much more things accessible. That yeah, really and, has and so then with te and with, te with with technology, you could screen you could screen record that moment, and you could just basically put it on your social media, and it's something that you're gonna have forever. Like. It's dope. It's, Times have changed. 
times has definitely changed. So let me yeah. let me ask y'all, AC the man. Let me ask y'all a cool question. So how y'all feel about that Cam Newton situation when he was at that at that camp thing? Man, I like me personally. I I thought that was like super disrespectful. Like I mean, just I mean I I understand like uh, the kid. He's he's like um, like he's confident and like. I mean, yeah, like you, you're you supposed to be like that. Like, but I feel like you're supposed to be like that towards, towards like the people like you're playing against. Like if somebody like your age, your age, his age would have came up and said something to him, like, like talking shit to him, like, yeah, it'd have been cool. But like this dude holding a camp, like when he doesn't have to, and you're disrespecting yeah. him about being a free agent. Like, I mean, you, you, ain't nothing wrong with being a free agent because you in the league still, like, it ain't like you at home. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, and it, and it's still plenty of teams that would love to want you on their squad. Thanks. And the, the fact that he kind of he went out of his way to attend this camp just to try to bash the man, like, <laughs> like, I, like he I, nah, like he didn't, I didn't win a Super Bowl. Right, uh, I would have to. What, I would have one of my. I would have to have one of my young boys wash him real quick. I would have, you know, hey, handle my lightweight, <laughs> <laughs> but. How do you yeah. feel, how'd you feel yeah. about it? What, what's, your thought, what's your thoughts on it? I agree with you now. I agree with you a thousand, like a hundred percent. You know what I mean? And we just, we went from talking about how kind of like, how, um, how lucky or like how lucky people are to even be able to interact with players. Right. Yeah. And then for somebody to take advantage of it like that, you can see how times got so different that somebody feels comfortable enough to even disrespect somebody <laughs> of his stature. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, 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 it you know, it, it is what it is. It happened, you know, it's, it's very disrespectful. You know what I mean? And, um, but you know, kids are, I mean, his age to should know a little better. You know, there's yeah. some kids who just you know, aren't their kids, kids, they, kids would say anything, you know what I mean? But right. for sure. Lamar, what's, what's good, good fam? <laughs> How are you? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. Can't complain. Hey, man, I appreciate you for pulling up on the show, man, and, and always showing support of everything. But I got a, but I got a question. I, this is a question for both of y'all, and I want y'all to think about this. one. Do y'all feel mm-hmm. the disconnect in the society with how people place a higher value on material things rather than basic human principles, character, respect, integrity, love, and, you know, just you know, just being a being a normal human being, like you know how we how we were taught when we were kids. Well, shoot, man. I mean, you know, shit. Unfortunately, not everybody's taught that when they're kids. You know what I mean? Just to be honest with you. Um. Uh. Besides that, like you know, yeah, like you know, it, it's all good to like. I'll be the first one to tell you. Um. Like, yeah, you know, save your money, invest your money, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you know, you if you have it, you know, you're if you have if you have something, you know, and you want something, like you want a dream car or whether it's a house, like, you know, go ahead and do that. Oh, yeah, you know what fair. I mean? But yeah, but for sure people there's people out there, you know, that literally measure themselves up to what they have and what people don't have, the haves and have not. You know what I mean? Whether it's really theirs whether it's not <laughs> kind of like to climb as climb uh this social ladder to i guess just be respected you know what i mean this and i and i say one thing it's like you know i've met someone before i've met people before right and they treat you one way but as soon as they find out you're an athlete you're a professional athlete right. you know they kind of want to do a little bit more for you you know and why is that because why is that it's because okay you just you just solidified yourself as some somebody of importance or that you've done something greater. And I think, you know, those people who who touch on to those who kinda harp on those materialistic things you're talking about are chasing for that respect, for that, for that, um, for that affirmation from people. You know what I mean? So it's like, damn, could you blame them? I guess they want to get treated right, because at the end of the day, it's like I feel like you should treat me the same whether you know I'm this person or that, you know? Facts. Unless I disrespect you. But um Facts. yeah, it's tough. All right, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting, um, because you know, when I think about it, especially for me working in hospitality yeah. and working in great life, right? So I worked in uh all the high end hotels from 
from Blue to St. Regis and, you know, I've seen the different scale of how people are, right? Yeah. You know, so, um, so like living here and living in, uh, living here in Miami, living in Vegas, living in LA, and you meet all these different people who, you know, they, they want to do all these different things, right? They want to go to these certain places and do all these different things. And, and, um, and a lot of people, man, especially like once they get to, I guess like a certain level, right? Like I remember I was reading a 50 cent book and he talks about, you know, how like some people, they want to chase that, uh, that number, right? That number, they want a million dollars, right? People just say all the time, I want a million dollars. If I get a million dollars, I'll be happy. <laughs> right. But then it's like, th- that can never satisfy you because even when you get the million dollars, you, you want 2 million now, Yeah. you want 3 million, you want 4 million. Right. And so, you know, so what you're saying, like, as far as like materialistic things, you can't really worry about the materialistic things because it's not going to make you happy, right? Those pleasures, right? right? Well, you're going to just satisfy you just for a certain moment. And, and you know, I mean, for me, obviously working at Hyde and working at Nightlife, I see this all the time where, you know, if somebody's coming in, they don't treat this guy better than they treat this other person, right? And so I, I've always... Um, I've always looked at everybody the same. You know what I mean? Like from if I met a billionaire or a millionaire or whoever it is, yeah. I always take care of everybody the same. I'm always the same person, right? And so, um, you know, I think society, man, especially now, really focuses on, you know, what you have. Well, really social media, right? Because everybody looks at social media. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if somebody's posted some, no, nobody never posted on the bad stuff on social media. At they all. post all the good stuff. <laughs> so, so they post, you know, all, all they post, you know, uh, this and that, you know what I mean? And, and, um, some people do it as motivation, right? And some people do it as inspiration, but then some people do it to just show off. Um, mm-hmm. but I think people just need to chase like what to make them happy, right? If a person likes traveling, well, how can you get into your best situation? To help you travel more, right? What do you got to get into? And I think that you know, people just need to just kind of focus on like what they want to attain and go out there and get it. Facts. I think a lot of people chase what makes other people happy. It's weird. <laughs> and it, it, I blame it, social media. Facts. <laughs> okay, that's a big fact. Dog. Like for real. Like, Before IG and Twitter, like we was, you know, back in the MySpace days, we was just big hanging. If you if you like me, you like me. Come through, you know, whatever. But now it's just like you see what other people have now, and and because rappers got Cubans now, everybody got Cubans, and and you breaking your neck to to be like the next person, or because they getting treated this type of way, and you want that same treatment. It's just you, trying to keep up with the Joneses, and a lot of people gonna go broke trying to do it. Like, <laughs> stay stay in your lane, that. stay in your lane. That's the role of that story. Yeah, you're right, man. And the thing is, too, is like even the expectations. Like, even if you meet a chick, let's just say I, I meet a chick, right? She wants you to take her to Problem with Twelve. She gonna want you to take her to Swan. She gonna want you to take her all those places. You know, all because like, all yeah. because of what future rapping about. Hey, and, and, and she wants the bottle of nineteen forty two that she ain't never bought in her life. Yep. Couldn't, yep. couldn't afford it on her own if you asked her. She want to ring the little class Azul bell. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't even know yeah. how to ring it though. Man, but sip, I know you gotta go, so I gotta give you this rapid fast five. And like we 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 need right. we need this five we need this fast five quick. Quick. Talk to me. All right. Favorite car? Bentley. Who's your favorite actor? Adam Sandler. Okay. 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 What's your favorite TV show? Uh, Last Chance You. Who's your favorite NBA player? LeBron. Yeah. If you had to choose one genre of music to listen to for the rest of your life, what would it be? R&B. Okay, okay. A little bit of Marvin Gaye, okay. (laughs) Simply like he is singing in the rain after after a little heartbreak. (laughs) Hey, hey, you know, hey, don't forget about, you know what? I don't know. Would you put, you can't, I can't put a raw wave. You know raw wave. You know, he got a little melody in it. 
Baby, yeah, I mean that's not R and B, but that's R and B, bro. He always he always R and B. I don't I don't think I didn't heard him actually like hop on a track and be like real mean with it, like. Uh, yeah. but, like I mean, like, if I had to have up. something, you feel me? But if I had to have, think about it. If I had to have something, I'm talking about every day. I can't listen to nothing else. I I gotta do something like that's gonna vibe me out. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So you gotta pick R and B. And if yeah. I can go back on the car thing, I would definitely say Ferrari. Like out of the cars that I have, my Bentley's my favorite. But my dream car, Ferrari, man. <laughs> hey man, well shit, Sip. I appreciate you for coming on the show, bro. Like I know you know you got another meeting to go to. Uh Lamar, I appreciate you for coming on, bro. Man, you you've been the realest, man. Y'all boys been great. I'm gonna make sure I get y'all these these videos, these clips. And yo, I mean, I, I appreciate y'all, man, from the bottom of my heart. Appreciate y'all, boys. Yeah, y'all boys, stay up. It was a pleasure meeting y'all for sure. Hey, talking to y'all you as well. Hey, yes, see, sir. The invite, Lamar is all love. You already know. Appreciate you, dog. Yes, sir. Yeah, DZ. So, what you think about the show? What you think about the first first half? It was lit. It was lit. Uh, both of them cool cats. Sip really gave like um, like that insight, and he he answered your question about the perception and everything, and. From the outside looking in, I, I get it, but it's, it's all based on the individual. We go off of what we see on social media, and we just think that everybody is just untouchable. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it, it's different. You see, like, somebody like Floyd Mayweather, and he has, you know, four or five guys around him. You couldn't get close to him if you wanted to. Best. You know, sex, sections everywhere. He don't fly commercial. He has his own private jet. Like he's like an untouchable person. But people like you, people like Sip, people like Mike Davis, people like Raheem, like just super chill. Don't feel the need to. You know, we we all come from like the same place in our respective states and cities. But it just all depends on the person. Yeah, like. Yeah. I, I would I would be that type of person if I had money like like a big time football player. Like the perspective. Like I didn't think he was gonna ask me a question. Right. I, I think him I think him asking me a question kind of crossed me over. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't I didn't come on here to be asked questions now. <laughs> but like, whatever. And, and I mean it was it was it was crazy. Like that question though, that cre- that question is just like it, it was very controversial. Like people, people was like, "Oh well, that's just him being confident." When did the world become so become so sensitive to confidence or whatever? That's their respective sport. And I mean, I, I kind of got that in a sense. But when you think about like like you like you said, like the accessibility with with the services and and the things that people are able to do now that they weren't able to do back when we were growing up, it it's kind of like it's kind of like disres- it's very disrespectful and like i don't know i'm not like old fashioned but and, and i and i talk shit to people when i'm when i'm in like the appropriate appropriate environment exactly but to come to a man's camp and to do that like yeah that's not the appropriate environment and it's kind of like one of those world star things. We live in a day and age to where we see a fight going down. The first thing we're going to do is run up and pull our phones out now versus trying to break it up, trying to rectify the situation, you know, or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, it's- but, 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 but you will feel bad if the person you're recording ends up beating a man to death yeah. or beating a woman to death. Now you got this footage that you could possibly get in trouble for. And it's just like, we, we gotta, we gotta do better as a people. No, we, we, we always, we always look for the, the opportunity to post some shit to make it go viral. Or to be the first. And, and, and I'm, I'm guilty for it too. Like even back in high school,